welcome to the show studio and today I am doing a watercolor of a Luna moth. This one was requested by one of my viewers, Stacy. Thank you, Stacy. Um, I took the challenge and I was pretty happy with how it ends up. So um, off camera I did a sketch of a Luna moth and of course the wings are never even when I try to draw something that's symmetrical on both sides. So I traced one side of it and I'm folding the paper in half. Probably would be better on stiff paper, but I had to see it to trace it. So it's on actually on deli paper. Um, and that way, cutting it like this, hopefully I will get evenly balanced um, wings. So that's my little cheat for that. <laughs> You could also um, trace the image from something you find online. Just trace it with tracing paper and then use like um, graphite, um, it's like carbon paper, I don't know how to describe it, and trace it onto your watercolor paper. That will work as well. Um, if you're not too confident about your drawing ability. And so now I'm just tracing. I'm being very careful because this stuff just moves. It's lightweight paper. It's not something you can actually push against. So I'm just getting the outline. I'm going to change the bottom of the wings just because um, all the pictures I saw, the bottoms are um, never hanging the same on both sides, so I wanted those to look a little different, but I wanted the main wings to match, <laughs> or at least be close in shape. Now, um, when doing something really representational, I think the sketching part is important. Um, because you actually can see, like on this one, you will actually see some of that lead um, in the finished piece. So you want it to look good. Um, but if you're not very good at sketching, like I said, you can use um, tracing paper and I think it's called graphite paper. You put down and then do your drawing trace it out and then go over it with something and I am not pushing hard at all this um, pencil it's a mechanical pencil it's kind of thick it's kind of a dark one you might want something that doesn't leave as dark a lead um, so you don't have quite as bold lines as what I'm getting and it's called a sumo grip came in one of my art snacks <laughs> boxes so it's really bad I get a lot of mechanical pencils I don't have any replacement leads for any of them I guess when I run out of enough I'll, <laughs> I'll look into buying some lead for them I do like this sumo grip it's a fat pencil which is nice Alright, see how I made those, I'm um, sorry, I don't know the anatomy, <laughs> but I made them hanging differently. And then, you can see the veins in the butterflies that I looked at online, but the veins were white. That's really hard to represent in watercolor, so um, I figured I would just draw them out, and at first I was going to like scratch them out with something, and then... When watercolor hit them, they would just automatically darken. I didn't end up doing that. I just decided to do it with pencil. I knew the pencil would show up a little bit. So, yeah. And I'm not following an exact pattern of a butterfly when I'm doing these veins. I'm just generally in what felt good. Well, Luna moths have really big, like, antennas. And if you've ever seen their face close up, it's not attractive. But they're pretty butterflies. Or moths. Sorry, it's a moth. 
M most moths are prettier than butterflies, actually. Alright, now I'm trying to figure out which watercolor set has the better green. My Koi watercolor set has a lot more choices, plus it has the lighter green, which um, I think is the better green for this particular project. Not very good with half pens. They're just too small. Of course, you should see the size of brush I'm using. <laughs> it's really fat. But I do the whole thing with this one brush. Yeah, with the one brush. I really like the this round brush. It is. Um, it can you can do a lot of things, and it gets a fine point on it. I'm not very good with fine points, but it it gets a good fine point. Um, looking at them online, they had a little bit of a blue-green cast to them. Of course, there were some that were different colors, different shades of green, but I thought they were blue-green, sort of. Sort of. Now, my plan is to just give them an overall coat of the one color. And go in with different layers. Kind of, um, they call it glazing, I guess. And here I decide that's a little dark. I'm trying to lift a little bit. Um, I've decided koi watercolors don't really lift very well. So fair warning. So now this is completely dry and I am taking my white eraser. I like the white eraser. It doesn't um, smudge. Now it can collect on the end of the eraser and then start to smudge. So you see me wipe it off on my hand there to make sure that it doesn't smudge back onto the paper. And I've gotten a lot of stuff on there, so I'm just using a wide, dry brush to brush off the eraser. Now once your watercolors have hit the lead, it's really not going to come off. Um, but the edges did pretty well, I think. So here I'm trying to get another um, darker blue-green shade. In um, the pictures I was looking at, their the wings are a little bit translucent. So I'm trying to represent that by uh, doing these lower wing sections. Um, Darkening that upper top part of that where the two wings meet and that is supposed to be underneath and in the very end You'll see what I do to make it look like it is underneath um, So this would be considered a mixed-media piece because I do use something to create that effect And if this is going too slow for you or whatever, you can speed it up, or if it's going too fast, you can slow it down. Um, I believe there's a gear on the YouTube video where you can change the speed if you're on a computer. Not sure if it works on like a laptop or your phone, but from the computer it does. So I'm just darkening and then I, I wet my brush and blot it off because this brush holds a ton of water and then um, blending those out. Now here's where I decided I wanted to darken those veins a little bit with this blue but it just looks too drawn on so I just go back with a damp brush and sort of blend them out. 
Um, I didn't like the real drawn on look. So we're going for a little bit lighter touch here. And then just smear it out a little bit with water. Now, I dry between all the layers. And that helps keep things going. And there my lines ended up a lot finer. See what I mean? That, that big old brush can do pretty fine lines. They call those things eye spots. They do kind of look like eyes, don't they? And they're supposed to be a little bit yellow, white, and black in my creation. So I dry it again, and now I'm getting some black. Crazy, the Koi student grade watercolors have two different blacks. Neither one of them is Payne's Gray, but uh, one is a black black and then the other one is probably Davy's Gray. It's a, kind of a brown black. In the pictures I saw of the Luna Moths, this top little section is like really brown, brown and black. That top stripe on their wings and on their back. Now here I'm trying to lift some color because it all is matching the wings and it's supposed to be yellow. <laughs> I try putting yellow on there. I don't know. I'm not doing good at doing the curve on the other side, so. I have to turn my uh, watercolor and, you know, go with what's comfortable with your hand. If you need to turn it, turn it. I just don't have a lot of space on this table. Um, otherwise, I'd be spinning this thing all over the place. <laughs> but it's a bit of a tight fit right there. See how small the lines that brush gets? remember the brand name at the moment but it's an acrylic and watercolor or watercolor don't mix them if you've used them for acrylic they don't work too well with watercolor I know this because I've done it so it's a synthetic so it does have a kind of a stiff core it's not floppy like some watercolor brushes which I've never learned on the real floppy brushes so I have a hard time with those I'm used to brushes with a little bit of spring back. Alright, so here's the trick to make that look like it's on top. Yep, I used a white pen. Um, this one is not a jelly roll. I can't think of what this one is, but um, a jelly roll, white jelly roll pen is, you can usually find it in Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and 
um, works really great. So we're already at the end. Thank you for the challenge, Stacy. And thanks everybody for watching. If you liked that video, please hit like, feel free to share, comment. And of course, if you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe.